what's up? Welcome to Space Couch. Oh, it's been it's been a week, but it's uh, you know it's still my favorite favorite time of of the week. I could have said that sentence better, but that's okay. Um, oh man, I am I am I got I got stressed out by space this week. Just so many meteorites repelling off the couch and uh, in in gravitational distortions. But you know we got it all. We live on a, a nice edge of terror out here in the void, but we got it all figured out for you for Space Couch. Oh, Surveyn, Space Couch favorite, uh, is in the chat room. Uh, what is up, everybody? So, um, yeah, I know you were thinking that I forgot to say uh, all three catchphrases again this week, but I didn't. Call the spaceships to Davenport, prepare for Devanarchy, and interface with a couch in space. And I remember to mute the mic while I took a sip off of coffee. Okay, so let's just bang out our wonderful advertising, um, by which I mean the record label that I run. Uh, uh, um, so check it out on Tiger Squawk Records. We have uh, um, Mr. Zoffin, the Wear Spiders, has recently signed to Tiger Squawk. Check them out. Norway's industrial. Great stuff. We have the theme song writer, Cedar Hill Furniture, furniture-based techno music. It's fantastic. And Canada's own virtual terrorist uh, are all bands you should check out on uh, Tiger, <laughs> tigersquawkrecords.bandcamp.com. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am so pumped. So excited to talk to uh, an old friend of mine, and uh, uh, we are on a journey out here through space. This guy has been on a journey of of other other uh, modalities. Um, big get here this week on Space Couch, ladies and gentlemen, Jay of Deviant UK. What is up, buddy? Hello, mate. How are you? I am, I am real well. Um, parking is really easy out here in space. Um, you know, uh, I made a spaceship out of a couch, so like I can always kind of curl up and catch up on Netflix. It's it's pretty awesome, man. And um, oh, hey, Gothrich is here. What is up, by you, sir? Well, I'm I'm propped up in bed at the moment oh, because I'm man. I'm I'm kind of immobile. Um, oh wow! I've had quite a year, Brian. I've had quite a year. But you I'll have had you. quite a year. Well, let's get into that a bit. And correct me if I get uh, this timeline wrong, because um, space and time curve out here in space. So, like, I might, I may get events uh, incorrect. But so you get the WT2 signing, and yep. then the uh, cracks start to show single drops. With a very Which wonderful you... Gossicles remix, I might have. Yeah, actually, your uh... remix is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, well, no. there's, it's a great single. Uh, tons of tracks and uh, other other remixes are on it. And then in 2018, what happens? So, <laughs> right, let's take it from the top. So, um, so last year I. Um, I worked for a very well-known retail company uh, or technology company, um, and I was in one, our store, and I had this terrible pain, which it kind of incapacitated me for a minute. And initially, they thought it was a, um, a prolapsed disc in my spine. Holy um, shit! Turned out later it wasn't that. But while that was being diagnosed, um, I I opened the, the washing machine in, in my apartment. Yeah. And it water poured out of it, and I turned to get a towel. Yeah. And I just remember seeing my legs go up in the air like that. Yeah. Um, and I landed flat with my neck against the against the wall. Oh. And I, and I anyway, but I thought I'd hurt my shoulder. Uh -huh. Um. And Cheryl, who, who obviously you know, um, yeah. said to me, "I think uh, I think we need to go to hospital because you, you you're holding your head funny." Um. Or strangely, as you would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Colloquialisms. It's um, all right. Um, so I decided to drive to hospital and get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, I, I just got a, a pain in my shoulder. So 
as we drove to hospital, um, Cheryl put the wrong fuel in the car um, without me knowing. Uh-huh. And so, so it's, it's stalled at traffic lights. And I got out and pushed it. Oh. So, so I got out and pushed the car oh. like, for like, probably about 100 yards. Oh. When I got to when I got to hospital, I got a fractured neck. Okay. Uh-oh. So I've been, I've been, and they said, "Oh, it's a good job you came straight here because you know any movement could probably cause paralysis." And I said, <laughs> Jesus. And, and I said, I said, "Oh, I've just pushed pushed an SUV for like a quarter of a mile." Oh. Okay. Um, just time out, time out right there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He pushed an SUV with a fractured neck. I just want to, <laughs> I want to make. Sure that we 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 make uh, that space point very space clear, because goddamn man. All right, that so just, that shows you how hard I am. You are a, you are hard, <laughs> dude. You you uh, that is that is you you are a barbed wire superstar. The uh, <laughs> ah, the so you are you're 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 at the hospital uh, after having done some Superman shit with a fractured neck. And and then the doctors go like, "Are you done for a year? What what happened? What's that like? Just to have the guy come out of the room and be like, "All right, here's what's happening." Well, it was kind of weird because they they, they put you in the like the, uh, the brace, and I I genuinely didn't realize what the problem was until right. until, until they said that, and I and they, they told me not to move at all, but uh, but being somewhat of a sort of single-minded man um <laughs> i constantly kept trying to adjust the neck brace because it was rubbing my head mm-hmm. and they were coming in saying yeah you could be paralyzed and i was like saying, yeah but it's really uncomfortable <laughs> um short-sighted maybe um um but i was in hospital for like 10 days yeah. and wait um which is free by the way in the uk okay just to point, right, just to right. point that out um we, we were Sort of, it was it was quite worrying, but but eventually, um, it was a compound fracture, so it it was quite stable. So I, I was released after ten days. Just got to take it it's fairly easy, but it still crunches when I turn my head, uh, you, which is which is pleasant. You're a literal wreckhead. <laughs> uh, Do you know what? It's, it's, anybody think this was scripted? You, you, you're quite the uh, quite the raconteur, aren't you? Uh, well, I mean. I mean, people don't like me for my music, that's for sure. But uh, <laughs> so, so you're you were in the hospital for ten days, and you come out, and you what's what's your life like there? You just everything's fine-ish. You just gotta like take it easy. Well, so it was it was kind of a case of, of sort of being. Um, gentle than myself really mm-hmm. not, they're not pushing it um but i'm not that kind of person which is quite which is quite difficult mm-hmm. um but during that time my mum i mean it, this is this is just one long tragedy right? mm-hmm. it's like it's like it's shakespearean no i mean um, we're in we're in um, the long haul man my, my mum became came really poorly right um, in, the, in the november um which was really worrying but it kind of took my mind away from my problems mm-hmm. um and then just before Christmas, I was diagnosed with something called um, a vascular necrosis, which is, this is really exciting stuff, isn't it? I'm a real pop star. In um, vascular necrosis? That's fucking metal as fuck. Like, that's just amazing. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, I need, I need one of those spider real logos for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, a vascular necrosis. Anyway, so... Side um, project. So, it's, so in February, I, um, I had a stem cell graft. Yeah. Um, which is quite quite sort of high tech, and it was um, was by quite one of the top surgeons in the UK. Um, but it hasn't worked. It, 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 sort of like ten months later, I'm still walking with a, with a stick, albeit with, quite, with albeit with some swagger, you know. Like, right. Well, I mean, I pimp the cane as much as I can. I, um, I if anyone could, but it's so you're getting this insane like out of a cyberpunk anime stem cell thing and then they just gotta go ah sorry like our bad or what i don't know i don't know i mean i'm sure they're very competent doctors but it's just so now smash cut to you uh uh somewhat immobile or well i'm i can walk but it's mm-hmm. it's, it's laborious mm-hmm. um 
and it's it, it gets i'll be honest with you it, get, it really gets you down because yeah you, 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 you take it for granted when you've got mm. mobility um and you know it kind of it kind of imp- imp- impacts on your daily life quite a lot mm. but but in in march um i lost my mum and dad passed away which is which is like the worst day of my life <sighs> yeah which kind of capped it all really yeah um and we were very very close but just be, just before um she passed away she said to me um I wish you still taught. And but she also said she wished I still did the eyebrow. And so <laughs> you must. um yeah, it's true. It's, and anyway, so I said, well, I'll tell you what, the next next show I get off of, I'll I'll accept it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, one came in um with the guys from um from Lancaster. And so I got to tell my mum I was gonna do it again, which is which is quite important for me. Oh wow. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's quite emotional. And and I and I she saw my eyebrows again. That's yeah. <laughs> because the thing is, I had I had genuinely thought I'd never do any of that again. I, I, no. I kind of laid it to rest a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, probably two or three years ago, I kind of got dis- disenchanted, and disenfranchised, um, and my career was kind of taken off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I worked with some amazing people, um, and so I thought I probably wouldn't do it again, um, and quietly faded away, and then. Even when I agreed to do this, it was for my mum. Really, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put much store in it. Really, mm-hmm. um, and as it got closer, I got more and more nervous about it. But when when the tickets went on sale, it sold out in like, in like a few hours, which was which is re- incredibly encouraging. Yeah, and and, and humbling really, because I didn't expect people to still be there or even remember. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I suppose I'm quite memorable. No, but, you... not, but not necessarily for good things. Um, <laughs> Stop. But but. but um, it was it was genuinely humbling, and it so the show happened a few weeks ago. Hell yeah! Um, let's take a look at that show now. This will just be about a minute of material, then we'll come uh, right back to couch. Although we can talk uh, while this is going. So this cool. is very recently in uh, Lancaster in yeah. the UK. If it wants to do the thing. Oh, uh, space problems. Space. Okay, the little lights flashing means that uh, this should be. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so Surveyn says, uh, I am sending Jay some much deserved hugs. And, and uh, oh, you look great here. Um, wow. I would, would not have uh, guessed there was any sort of mobility issue based on, on this video. Yeah, but it's it looks like it belongs there in a weird way. Like it's it's very very uh very Oh wow! 15, Fifteen years ago, right? And, and the the original guitarist was there with his with his wife, who I know really well. And you know, it felt like it felt like I'd come home, really. Wow! Uh, and that show was with uh, Cypherdyne. Yeah, Cy- Cypherdyne um, were, um, were on just before us. Okay. I mean, actually, one of the guys from Cypherdyne organizes the show. Oh right, okay. Uh, Andy, you know Andy. Absolutely. Um, um, and with, there's an opening act called Still Forever, who are um, really good. They're worth checking out as well. They're um, sort of female electronic act, mm-hmm. um, re- really interesting kind of kind of stuff. But it was it was just great from start to finish, and it was oh, fantastic. It felt it felt natural to be be back on stage, even uh, if it was fucking painful. Oh my god, what a what a crazy arc! Um, I have to ask. Uh, when you're just sort of, um, it, I want to say in traction, I don't know if that's even the right word to use, but like, like where does your mind go? Do you write new songs? Do you just sort of stare at the ceiling? Uh, I, how does that happen for you? Well, it's, um, so you, you're in this brace, but and I was told I couldn't move. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I genuinely didn't think I'd write a song again. Really? I, You're I just really, like, I, yeah, I, deviant's done. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, weirdly, I'm, 
I have a I have a third album written mm-hmm. and demoed, but I just shelved it because I, I thought um, I didn't, have, you know, if it was the interest was still there, mm-hmm. um, or or you know, this scene is in moves in every Christian circle sometimes, um, and so I when I was in hospital, it felt like almost like um, like rock bottom, you know, because yeah. I, I didn't I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to walk again at one point, <laughs> which was kind of kind of bad. Um, <laughs> Just a little bit. Just, the worst thing is as well that it, it, it was it when you can't do anything, you kind of captive, and you become. I was surrounded by the, the people who snored the loudest I've ever known. <laughs> no. it, it was bizarre. it was like some kind of kind of like record breaking attempt. Oh God. I, I, after everything you're, you're you're put next to like just a permanent Merzbell concert just and uh, while you're trying to okay so that happened um yeah and it was it, it, it was just a quite quite a experience i was i was lucky that you know i had some you know i had Cheryl coming to look after me every day really because big up to michelle it was, it, was, it, was, Cheryl, it, was, it was awful it was awful um mm. you know, and it, but it, you know i, I rec- you know i tend to bounce back quite quickly um, mm. I'm, I'm, no- yeah. I'm nothing. I'm nothing if not resilient. Um, yeah. So yeah. So so yeah, at that point, I I wasn't thinking about music particularly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that is interesting. In that, like, there's this came at a, a point in your life where you were out, and in a weird way, you're kind of back, almost because of it. Um, the well, uh, you are unbreakable for sure. The uh, the live lineup we just saw in the the clip um, song, by the way, crack start the show. Check that out. But uh, live lineup looked great. Who is playing in uh, Divin UK? I want to say these days, but at least for the last show, uh, who's who's uh, what was your live lineup? <laughs> that's 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 a story in itself, actually. Um, so obviously you know you know you know Hig yourself. Hell yeah, Hig, Hig's the guitarist from Cypherdyne, um, but he's also the guitarist from Deviant. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say which one of those is more important. Um, <laughs> it's a big um, family. It's all good. We, we both know. Um, <laughs> but Cypherdyne are amazing. Um, I love them. In Manchester, probably five six years ago. Yeah. Um, Hig came off stage. I'd, I'd stood at the side of the stage and watched them. And he came off stage and said, uh, "Do you want to be my guitarist?" And he was like, "He thought I was joking, so he went, oh. yeah, okay." He said, "Yeah, okay." And I was like, "Okay." And that, that was it. As far as I was concerned, <laughs> he, he was in. Um, That's awesome. And and, and uh, uh, for um, for the Lancaster show, which you've just seen, we had yeah. a guy stand in at the last minute, actually, um, for a number of reasons. Um, but Gary Watts, who's a, um, a friend of mine. From a band called Nature of Wires, which you probably know as well. Word. Um, he's he's kind of been a fan of Deviant for a long, long time. He said some mm. very complimentary things about me in uh, the press and stuff like that, which is nice. Um, although it sounding like someone's influence makes you feel kind of old, um, and I feel old. Uh, it, so he's going to be joining us on stage um, for shows. Um, I'm not sure what I've got a lot of show offers coming in for next year, and I mean a lot of offers coming in. Um, I just don't know how many I can commit to because it, I think well, this this is to just sort of like make me sound like the oldest man on the planet. Uh, I think I've got to have a robotic hip replacement. Wow! Um, I think by oldest you mean most industrial of all time. That's pretty <laughs> awesome, dude. Well, well, well the, the funny thing is, I'll, I'll tell you. So, so I went to um, I went to the consultant, and he he's almost like the the me of the surgeon world because <laughs> because he sat there and said, well. I, I, I need to tell you, I am the best. <laughs> and, I, and I said, okay. And he said, so um, we're going to probably look at robotic hip replacements. And I went, so I paused for a second. I was like this going, okay, does it need batteries? <laughs> and he said, does what need batteries? And I said, well, the hip. And he went, the hip isn't robotic. The robot does the operation. Oh, okay. So, so I was I was imagining myself walking like Robocop. No, know? that's I totally went there too with the gun in the leg and shit. That would have been awesome. I know. <laughs> that's like, funny like, you know, I, you know, I thought, you know, more machine than man. Yeah. Know. There you but, go. Um, 
That's not the case. Apparently. That's not the, okay. The, but the robot fits fits the hip, which that, do, is that is that okay? Yet we, we all know Skynet. <laughs> like that's the moment that the uh, doomsday happens is in the middle of <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of my surgery. Yeah, yeah. The let's, robot. let's be honest. Given last year, that could happen. That's, <laughs> that, that's when it would happen. Mm, you know what? Fuck this guy. And then just. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's had a shit year. Let's just pass some more stuff of it. Um, yeah, so that's. So, that, so, that, so, that, um, so I'm looking at, at some shows actually. I've got, I've got one booked in January. Um, no, no. Nice. We, we, um, but that would probably be the last one for the first half of the year or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, Decided to resurrect the album and um, played played one of the new songs when we played live, um, and it was it went down really really well. Uh, it's kind of a bit. It's got a bit of a prodigy feel to it. Oh hey! Um, um, I was a huge fan of the prodigy. Devastated mm-hmm. when when obviously what happened to Keith. Sure. Um, I wrote quite an extensive bit about it online because uh-huh. uh, I think I don't think there's ever, ever been anybody like the Prodigy. I think I think they were sort of um, singular, you know, pivotal, pivotal, yeah. in, pivotal in electronic music certainly. Um, Speaking of hips, but but um, there's certainly a Prodigy influence in there, so it's a bit heavier. Um, but it went down really well, so there will be a new Deviant UK album next year. Fantastic. Uh, Helen Diane says, Bionic J and Gary Watts of Nature of Wires says, hey guys. Um, oh, science fiction is in the room. Very excited about the Prodigy album. Uh, so 2020, we see New Deviant UK. Very excited. Uh, what might, what's the, do you have an album name? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Larger Than Life. Larger Than Life. Check that out. Uh, wherever fine digital electronic music is sold i would imagine or it might, might be called all that noise i don't, I don't, I don't know. okay well it's a uh, uh, work in progress um much like the man himself um no robotic hip replacements on this one but uh, it may sound like it depending on how industrial you get i can't even believe i've told you that really but well you know that's amazing it's a great story and that's what space couch kind of allows us to do i think because it's this great um you know, I don't have to cut to a toothpaste commercial or, 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 or cut it for, like, server time on a podcast or something. We just get to talk, man. Um, well, of course, you and, I, you and I have toured America together. Well, like, we, that is something that, yeah, once you watch Prometheus five times with a dude on a big black bus, you develop a rapport. Um, yeah, that was... What, was... what was that other thing we watched? The, the, the thing about the oh. metal band? I remember we watched Machete, and uh... oh, yeah, 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 you made me watch. I actually watched that. <laughs> um, um, what was it about the band Anvil? Oh God, that you did another leg of the tour that I had to tap out of, and I that must have taken place at that time because I haven't, I still haven't seen the Anvil movie. Um, but yeah, there was. There was a lot of that going yeah, on. That, that was a fair tour, that was. Oh, hey, Mark here. He says, and Avengers. Uh, Avengers was not out. Oh, Avengers, the the, the weird uh, old one, maybe. Um, what weird old one? There was, um, there was like, I don't, I might fuck up the backstory on it, but there was like, uh, like an indie comic, and then they made a movie out of it, like Uma Thurman was in it, and uh, it was just called Avengers. <laughs> And then obviously they came out years later with the, oh, no, the Avengers. No, no, that's a different thing. That's 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 the Avengers, which is which is a British TV series. In yeah, the 60s, the 70s, yeah, okay. With Patrick Patrick McNee. <laughs> um, and Mark says, and Dissector forced us to watch Your Highness. I don't even know what that is. I don't know that. Is. I don't. That was that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. Um, uh, in the, the science museum here in Boston, by which I mean space, uh, there, there, <laughs> there, there, Boston there, Spaceport. Boston Spaceport. There you go. There's, um, if you walk around, there's, there's some little display dedicated to, um, I think a scientist named Edwin Land. Um, but my joke was, you know, that's what the lead singer of Dissector calls his house. It's, uh, <laughs> 
I thought, I thought all, all American scientists were Thomas Edison. Well, yeah, yeah all of them. Did, did every he, single one. Did he, take, did he take credit for everything? And, like, dude, everything. Like, he's still, he's probably going to take credit for this show. Uh, <laughs> somehow, one of one of his heirs will. It's it's pretty astounding. Um, yeah, that, that's, that, that's was, always, that tour was incredible. I mean, I... I remember that you guys managed to crash the tour bus before you got to the first show. Yeah, sorry about that, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> well, because we land, and there's this beautiful bus, and then it's like, who, which one of you knows how to drive a giant 18-wheeler bus? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, fa- we'll find out, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like two grand's worth of damage. Uh, two, like, t- like, right away, like, before the show one. Uh, I did see Jonathan recently. We just played Toronto, and... Uh, him, him, and uh, the 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 uh, for all the emptiness gang showed up, and it was wonderful. Um, Sharon Hayes from Chicago, looking forward to the new music. Jay uh, says she. Uh, speaking of of shows, <laughs> just real quick. Now that I live out on the East Coast, every now and then we'll pass by uh, New London, Connecticut. Which uh, the show sticks out in my mind. There was there was more people on stage than there was in the audience, and there's two people in the gothicals. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That was the one that had the chili, wasn't it? Oh, oh the... yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to yell, but I forgot about. That was the weirdest gig oh, ever. And that guy, wasn't there a guy standing on the bonnet of the? Oh, like the, the tour bus but afterwards. Yeah, no, I think yeah, Mike got hammered and did that move a few times by the by the end of of our leg. Uh, well, I'll never forget that I, I managed to somehow nearly split you guys up on the first show <laughs> by, by doing my, my usual Jay Smith wanker routine where we're, we're in the bus. And, we, and and Jonathan, to try and cut the ice, went and bought 100 burgers from White Castle. I mean, 100 burgers! <laughs> I mean, a hundred burgers. It came out carrying a hundred burgers. A hundred of them. I mean, the feat alone uh, was, 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 was cinematic. However, speaking of gigs and stuff, I know you have played dream gigs uh, around the world. Uh, any festival you could want to name. Uh, do any stand out as like real top shelf gigs for you? Um. Well, the UK ones are all always yeah. quite, um, quite um, sort of special because obviously I'm, 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 you know, it's my home home country. So you've got things like like Infest and and Resistance was a big one. Word. I know you're playing Resistance next year. That's where amazing. we met. Um, but it, it was because it's kind of quite crystallised, um, the, you know, the people. So it was it was kind of a a real sort of microcosm of the scene, which is mm-hmm. amazing. And Infest just does the same thing every year, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Whitby Goth Weekend is quite important to me because hmm. uh, that's always been a, a good one. Um, but I've, I've appeared on stage in, at all of them at some point. Um, not not Meryl Luna. They don't hmm. like me for some reason. No, I hear um, that. They don't like me either. <laughs> it's easily done. Um, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, I would say probably one of the one of the best experiences was... Um, I appeared with Girls Under Glass at their 25th anniversary show. Oh, nice! And uh, uh, Wave Got at Treffen. Uh-huh. And it was, it was, the, it was the Park Boone. So and that that was really memorable. Um, the last Whitby Goth again was really memorable. Some of the state shows were memorable for different reasons. <laughs> um, but but I I genuinely had the time of my life on both American tours. The first one, of course, yeah, was, was with Project Pitchfork. Right. Um, it was obviously a mutual friend of ours, Peter. Yeah. Um, I think he liked me more than you, but you know. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. I, I, in fairness, Brian, I think he probably prefers you. But um, we, you know, Steve did that amazing track with Santa H, you didn't you? Which I really liked. Oh yeah, sure. that was that was. Oh god, that was crazy. I know. Um, I know karate. Yeah, I got. I got an email. Like, hi, I am Peter Spielis from Project Pitchfork. Do you want to do guest vocals? And I'm like, which one of my friends is fucking with me? Because they know like, I'm a giant Project Pitchfork fan. And then, like, at, at least two emails later, I, I, I allowed myself to believe, like, I think this is the real guy. And, uh, and then a couple years later, we were riding on a roller coaster together in Hamburg. And it was the weirdest night of my life. <laughs> well, they, they sort of... Um... They asked us to, to play with them, and well, we, we played a couple of shows with them in, in 
Germany. Mm-hmm. And then, then we kind of spoke about it. And the next thing I knew, we were we were booked to play with them in, in America, which for the for the whole tour. Mm-hmm. And they look they looked after us so nice. well. You know, we we didn't pay for anything. It was, wow. it was just it was just phenomenal. Um, and it was like twenty two dates across. The Damn, states. dude. Um, it, and that was an adventure in itself. Um, it was just incredible. Uh, and, and I'll always be grateful to Peter for that. Um, Peter and Peter and Jurgen, obviously, and. and show you be but um because obviously i'm a massive project picture Talk fan uh and then of course we did it again in 2012 with you guys in a bus with 100 burgers and um lots of bands were on board oh yeah but that that was an adventure and a half not not for the right reasons. not for the right reasons but uh what time's loading brian what uh god damn it (laughs) every time i see uh, uh, dissector. We have to figure out what time loading is. Um, <laughs> who are who might a hero of yours be? Except... <laughs> um, right. Okay. So my hero. Um, I, I suppose I've got to say the obvious one, really. I'm like, um, you know, Gary Newman is my biggest influence. Mm-hmm. And always was. Um, seen him live and unhealthy a number of times. Right from the age of 12 I still I think it's incredible that he's still still doing it and still no, relevant. That's great. it's not like an 80s nostalgia thing it's, no um, it, 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 it's it's current material um, and it, it that's that's wonderful to see um so I suppose he's my hero really mm. I mean you know I still have a like a post of him on, on the wall here which <laughs> which is a bit embarrassing don't know why I've told you that um but yeah, he's, he's my hero, I would say. He's, um, cool. In terms of mu- mu- musical influence as well, um, it was him who made me want to do the like the uh, the music thing in the first place. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, uh, it was great. Like my brother and I kind of grew up on the Pleasure Principle, and then so we recently got to see him together for like a My Name Is Ruin show in Chicago, and that was that was so great. To to uh, then he does it like you said all the the old stuff and the new stuff and then just kind yeah. of like uh, uh, rebond with with my little brother uh, over uh, beautiful synthesizer music and uh, uh, he he said like I I never thought I'd see Gary Newman um, as a bunch of future slaves in burlap sacks. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of the image, isn't it? As well, it's pretty great and. Uh, yeah, good call, good call. Um, so we had talked. What's that? Me? Um, I have, I have four. Um, on any given day, I'll go. My dad. I mean, I mean, I mean obviously, I'm always one of them. I well, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's like, there's the Mount Rushmore, and then you're sort of the sun over the Mount Rushmore. Uh, but the the actual Mount Rushmore would probably go my dad, Adam Carolla, Henry Rollins, and uh, Klaus Larsen. Uh, that is really? that is my that's four. Not, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's interesting. And I also find it kind of weird you had the list ready. Yeah, well, you know, I asked <laughs> I'm, the question. I'm always prepared for someone to ask me who my top four heroes are. Always. <laughs> well, <laughs> it. I don't know. Like, um, is it I, written on the back of your hand? It is written on the back of my. Well, I'm 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 dedicating a knuckle to each one so I can just sort of memorize and then I don't know punch <laughs> well, myself you, in the face. Well, NLP, neuro linguistic programming. The, yes. Tap your, tap your knuckle. Remember the hero. Right, right. Well, you know, there's only four. It's not like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going down a, a laundry list. How are your arms doing? You holding up the uh, L, L, A Paulo wants to know if you're holding up an iPhone physically above your head. I am holding an iPhone. Oh, well, <laughs> okay. Head, Let yeah. me know if you need a break, buddy. Um, the, 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 listen, the initial plan was for me to be somewhere all mysterious and yeah. and suitably um, suitably deviant and, and ostentatious. Right. But But... I genuinely couldn't get comfortable anywhere, so we scrapped the idea of using the, 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 the sort of the webcam on the, mm-hmm. on the Mac, um, and I've ended up holding my iPhone mm-hmm. in a way that makes my face look slimmer. <laughs> oh, stop! The um, I lost, had... I lost, I lost um, um, twenty-four pounds in fifteen weeks. Get out! Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. It's got to feel. I mean. I mean, it, 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 it feels great to, to do it. It feels great to have cheekbones back. But I would kill. 
I would kill you and everybody you know for a sandwich. Oh, really? Yeah, Does... zero, zero carbs, man. Hey, oh, I, is, by your choice or sort of prescribed by doctors? Um, <laughs> well, I remember when I went to the consultant, one of them said, uh, you need to lose weight. And I mm-hmm. went, can I have a second opinion? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that for a while, well, for a long time, um, I lived, well, as you know, I lived a fairly hedonistic lifestyle. Yeah. Um, but that's all gone now. Uh-huh. Um, all of it. Uh, I, I feel much better for it. Yeah. But as a result of stopping that lifestyle, I piled weight on. Mm. You know, significant, uh, ridiculously. Yeah. Um, and I let it go unchecked. And then I just decided probably earlier this year that it was now was the time to, to do it. That's um, awesome, man. And I've been pr- pretty, pretty, pretty good lately. And it, the weight's kind of dropping off me. Mm. It's just I wish I could move a bit more at the moment rather than this kind of um, sort of. Uh, I look like a like a um, a villain from a World War Two film you know, with, a, <laughs> with 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 a sort of pronounced limp and a cane. Oh um, yeah, but that's that, that's dope as fuck though. You gotta. You don't have a cat, do you? Because you could you gotta you'd slowly pet the cat. No, I've got, and... I've got a fucking massive dog. Oh, do you? Okay, I have a dog yeah. now too. Maybe she maybe she'll uh, she sometimes comes on the 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 Space Couch show here, but it's uh. It's raining outside here in space, so she's angry at me that I haven't been able to take her out yet. Um, Has she got little little like helmet? Uh, we got her. We got her a purple coat, um, so she turns into a little purple space sausage. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, no, no helmets yet. Um, the uh, yeah, I've I've been doing the the no sugar no grain thing for for a couple of years now too, and uh, I find it works. Um, oh yeah, because you because you always need to lose weight. One, <laughs> one thing I, one thing I think about when I think Brian Grouper is the guy needs to lose weight. Yeah, that fat fuck. You, uh, you are literally one of the slimmest people I've ever met. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, uh, people don't people don't listen to my shit for the music. Um, the uh, Be- beautiful teeth as well. What, oh well, you know. Uh, I've always, I always, I said that the first time I met you. I think. Did that have beautiful teeth? Yeah, I think so. The, the way we met, as far as I can recall, is. Um, oh God, God, this could be, this could be awful. No, it's, 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 it's awesome. I'm, oh really? Okay. It's, I mean, it's bad on me. I've been, I've been sober for about five and a half years. Um, I used to drink heavily, and. Um, it did, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, I never noticed that. <laughs> the night one of the first time we got resistance, I got sauce like right away. And then people asked me what, what band I was in. And, um, Oh, I remember this. Cause no. it, my, my joke that was hilarious in my own head was to yell, I'm in deviant UK, like really American <laughs> it up. And we'd never met or anything, and uh, it, because it has the word UK in there, ha ha. Uh, and then we finally met, and uh, I was like, "Sorry, I've been saying that I'm in your band." And you go, "Well, how how well do you know the lyrics to Access Denied?" And I was like, "I pretty well, man." And then, like, so uh, your first interaction with me, you were nice enough to uh, invite me on stage for guest vocals. So, oh, that's right. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. So thank you very much for that. That was uh, that was cool, actually. and and you 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 weren't on the side of the stage. I was like, I introduced you, yeah, and you were, you were in the crowd and cl- like did a reverse stage dive onto the stage. <laughs> well, so I, like you you you, di- you somehow dived from the crowd onto uh, the stage. Well, that's the Deviant UK resistance magic, man. <laughs> um, we had talked briefly a couple times about uh, our mutual love of uh, Moon Knight. And, yes. And now that that show has been greenlit uh, for Disney That's very Plus, exciting, isn't it? Uh, do you have any any hopes for uh, the Moon Knight show? Well, yeah. Um, so, firstly, I should have sung that Moon Knight is cool song for you, shouldn't I? Well, it's all right. We'll circle back on that. Yeah, but I should have done that. So I'm sorry about that. Not a problem. Um, uh, I was a little all over the place then. But anyway, um, we'll do it. We'll do a sequel. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, um, we'll have a yeah, whole no, show no, of samples. Absolutely. But um, so, well, as you know, I'm, I'm a massive Moon Knight fan, the same as yourself. Um, I think it could be amazing. Mm-hmm. It's got to be gritty and it's got to be 
dirty in the same way that the first series of Daredevil was. Yes. Um, and it needs to capture the kind of the um, the idiosyncrasies of the of the, mm-hmm. of the hero, really, because he is the ultimate anti-hero, isn't he? Right. And so it's got to be done right. You know, it's got to be violent. Um, right. But it's also got to be suitably dark to capture the fact that he's a very troubled guy. Mm-hmm. And also, and, and I always, I've always loved the ambiguity of: is he actually super powered, or, or is he just a you know a psychopath? Right. Um, and I, I hope they capture that kind of uh, that grey area, right? You know, so, so it's oh, almost yeah. flirting with the sort of mental health side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. I, I, it came as a surprise. Totally. Um, do we know who's playing him? Then? No. Um, I mean, the world exists where he could be played by, depending on how they do his psychosis. I mean, you could have him played by four different guys, right? Um, but I mean, it's all this. It's always the same guy. Sometimes they have him have multiple personalities. I don't know if they're going to manifest that. I've heard Shayla Booth tossed around. Yeah. Um, I've they. I've heard Keanu Reeves. Um, I don't know. It's, it could be some guy we've never seen before. He'll be great. Um, we don't, I don't know anything about it. I had, I had the whole world, uh, message me about it when the show got announced, but, uh, I don't think details have been released into the, the world yet on the, on that one. I'm just pumped, uh, to say nothing of the She-Hulk or Ms. Marvel shows that are also coming out. I will well, have... Whoever it is has got to be able to do kind of rugged and, and roguish. Yeah. But also be um, sort of suave and charismatic like Stephen Grant. Yes. And so it, it – but also streetwise like Jake Lockley. Yes. Um, so, so it's – Michael Bean would have been great. Oh, good call. Yeah. He, oh, he, he would have been great. Done, he could have done that. But he, what, what he's about – 60 now, isn't it? Well, wasn't that always the character? Like, he's an he's an older guy. Like, he's not, like, a super-powered 16-year-old or anything like that. Like, he's he's been around for a while. He's got this ex-mercenary past. Uh, so, I mean, you could... You, and Michael Bean might be a tick old. I really yeah. want to see Frenchie played by Jean-Claude Van Damme, but that's just me. And uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, um, we, we went to a Jean-Claude Van Damme an evening with John claude Van Damme actually at the what? venue. And, yeah, he, he he did a series of um of of like sort of evenings with John John claude Van Damme in the UK. Um, a number of sort of big celebrities do that. Sylvester Stallone's doing one mm-hmm. where they just sit and talk anecdotally about. Right. Perhaps, maybe I should do one. The hell about. yeah! I mean, you, you can turn in the wonderful Space Couch show here as part of your, your dossier to... Uh, Maybe this is it. This, this is actually... This, this is my is... evening with Jay Smith. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> but but um, he was bizarre. Brian... Is he a weird John dude? Cl- John Club Van Damme was... He was really strange. On stage. <laughs> awesome. It, I, I, I mean, it was packed. It was, there was probably 2,000 people in the room. There was mm-hmm. like dinner and everything else. Right. Um. But he, he, he was very, very clearly on cocaine. <laughs> and he kept, he kept jumping up and, and, and like, talking about, about his, his acting auditions. Doing very little talking about... Um, about well, the best thing is, you, you'll love this. You'll love okay. this. So, at the start of it, they had two Universal Soldiers come up. Wow, okay. Who stood at the side of the stage. Nice. Holding the guns. Right. The, the, sort of headsets on and everything else like this. Yeah. And there were sort of like big, big motherfuckers standing at the side of the stage. And they stood there for the whole show without moving. Wow. The, the, seriously. The, the, hold, holding these guns with the, the eyepieces on it. It's like a Nachtmar show without the music. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, he didn't come on for ages. It, 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 it was... <laughs> And so because just... These poor guys are still on stage just holding the guns in the, in the costumes. Yeah. And, uh, and then even though... The, the, the person who was interviewing it was obviously quite staged and scripted. He, he, he got annoyed with the interview. Even though they're asking questions, he'd obviously agreed to answer. Right. Oh, no. And, and then he, didn't, he, he did a series of photos. I mean, he, I suppose he's an entertaining guy in, in a manner of speaking, but there was a lot of people looking at each other going, what on earth is going on here? <laughs> Just what have we signed up for? That's amazing. Uh, Apollo wants to know what would... Jay's superpower be big up from Montan. 
um, what my superpower would be. I mean, I, I, like, let's just say if you could choose or what do you, if you, I'll, I'll, I'll open end it. Um, either you can elect one or tell us what superpower you may already sort of have. <laughs> uh, ego. Okay. Is, is I'm that not seeing that, by the way, but okay. No, I, I, I know. I, I kind of hide, I'm like under a bushel quite a lot. Um, you know, I'm something of a wallflower, but you know, that, that is my sort of uh, secret shame, my ego. Mm-hmm. Um, what would my superpower be? Um, I kind of like, you know, Marvel, Captain Marvel, the original one. Who, yeah, who yeah. Wasn't, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I kind of liked it when uh, he could sort of channel the negatives, though. Oh, no, wow. I'll, I'll tell you what. Fuck it. Flying. Flying would be good. Flying would be good. I I love the deep pull of of uh, Marvel, uh, later Quasar, yeah? Uh, or was that a different guy? No, Quasar, Quasar was um, Quentin someone. Okay. Then I've got my my same sphere. When, of... Wendell Vaughn, Quentin. Yes! Oh, <laughs> loving channeling the negative and the negative zone. Um, but, uh, you know... How can, how can I remember this stuff? Uh, yeah, it's... I mean... I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure when my sister's birthday is, but you know, I know the secret identity of all the ghost writers. Like why, why would I not? But, uh, Johnny, Johnny Storm. Yes. And, uh, Dan catch. And, um, uh, there's a new one. I don't know. Okay. You called me out. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know the names, I know the names of all the ghost writers. Well, I know, I know two of them. I know two of them. I know I'm, I'm 50, three, two out of three in bed. Uh, the, uh, but the, the, the the point is that yes, there's uh, some some esoteric uh, comic book knowledge that uh, sometimes supplants things. But uh, oh, self depreciating humor is your superpower, says uh, Surveying in the chat room. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I'm quite good at that. What? Uh, I, I also, I've got to say, I, I also think I'm fucking hilarious. You are fucking hilarious. I've laughed like this is. You might be selling a setting a space couch record for belly laughs. You do, you do, it sometimes British humor doesn't translate that well to, to the states. Well, I mean, you're, you're you're something of an unusual character. You're, you're a different case in point, aren't you? Because well, I'm you're, you're a bit of an anglophile, aren't you? Many I I I am wildly guilty as charged uh, on on that end. But uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, going to be looking forward to seeing all of you at Resistance Festival uh, <laughs> in Sheffield, and um, that's going to be great. The that will be with uh, uh, Bjarki from Iceland and uh, Harry from Albany, New York. We played with at the last uh, Resistance Festival, uh, and that'll be great. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we may have already have we may already have some celebrity uh, guest stars lined up for that gig. Uh, they may or may not be British. They're totally British. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what goes on there. Um, have you n- noticed any trends or changes uh, between, let's say, just in in the world of electronic music in general? Like your first kind of dabblings in it to now, like what would you say wow. is different? Uh, yeah, enormously. So when I first started doing it, which is <laughs> a long time ago, yeah, um, don't worry about it. Two thousand and four. Word. Um, Me too, man. Um, it was, it was, you know, you, you sold CDs, and, right? And you would go, you would play shows, and you sold CDs, and and. It was it was never about the money particularly, but it was it was um, that was that was how you got your music out there. And for technology and the music industry model to change mm-hmm. so dramatically in in the last sort of fifteen years is is fourteen fifteen 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 years. I, I tell you what, I couldn't remember how old I was today. By the way, <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. I said, am I forty seven or am I forty eight? Um, 47. Obviously, I don't look it. I know you're all thinking that, but um, you look great. And anyway, um, but you know, in 15 years, it's changed so hugely. Mm. I remember when we did Bob Wise Star the first time, the first album. Um, it was, it it sold well. You know, mm-hmm. the physical, physical copies, um, and it sold out. That was on Rebco Records. That was that was a great time. Um, and the demo single, sort of access denied, and Raptured Saints both sold out. 
and then we repressed it twice, Damn. which was which, which was great, but it didn't it, you know, it didn't make much of a dent in any sort of um, any sort of end of year chart or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But um, when it released Very Bad Thing, which was which was the second album, th- sort of five years later, that did much better everywhere. But it didn't sell as many physical copies as the first one. Interesting. So, so it, it would it was kind of number one in a few sort of charts um, and sales charts here and there, a few different countries, mm-hmm. um, which was enormously gratifying. That's, and you know, that's and, awesome. And, it's, it's a great feeling, you know. Um, I remember. No, I, I don't ringing, know. I've never had it happen. <laughs> I remember ringing my mum and saying, "Oh, I'm number one," and she was like, "That's amazing." That's awesome. Um, but I didn't tell her it was like in the alternative charts in Luxembourg, wasn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but anyway, so, so the, the difference in sales, physical sales, was was massive, and I I toured endlessly mm. for a long time. You know, I, I played literally everywhere yeah. twice. Wow. Um, no, seriously. I mean, I, I, it was funny. I was talking to someone the other day. I played every major city in, in the Netherlands. And I don't know why that is, because I've never played in France, but but, mm. but I've played every city. I mean, I mean, like 15 cities. In That's the pretty Netherlands. awesome. Wait, is it? That's yes. Because <laughs> we were doing it every weekend for about 15. About uh, um, I don't know what it, it was like. We were kind of desperate to break the Netherlands. I don't know why that was. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't even remember how that was a strategy, but um, but we did it. And it was great, amazing fun, a lot of adventures. Um, but I was having to do it all the time. Mm hmm. To, to, to make it make a living out of it and even then i wasn't making a living out of right. it so that that was a massive sort of paradigm shift was the move from sort of physical sales to sort of to streaming mm-hmm. um i'll never forget i met a guy at a gig once who um who said to me uh oh i love the new album um i've downloaded it off soul Seek. Yes, soul seat, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, and I said, uh, all right, cheers. I said, uh, why, why would you tell me that? Well, you know what? Why, why would you yeah. tell me that? And he said, um, well, are you so arrogant that you think people should should buy your music? Damn. And I said, well, I am quite arrogant, but um, but, <laughs> but that that's not the reason why. I said because that that you're taking that money out of my wallet, and. He didn't understand it. And I argued with him for ages about it. And uh-huh. eventually he, he wrote me quite a long letter telling me that I should just be grateful for the um the exposure. Of someone Yeah, yeah, of someone of someone copying my music off a of file sharing stuff. And then and then of course it went to sort of like uh, Spotify and, and Apple Music and stuff like that. Um and as you will well know, the, the sort of the, the income from that is massive. Mm. And so it's just much more difficult to 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 sort of break it as a musician these mm-hmm. days than what you know. It, it's just really hard, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I couldn't tour, you know, indefinitely, every, you know, every, every weekend or, or or two or three weeks at a time, because it's just not practical. Um, so that's 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 the it's, the it's the music industry business model has has changed dramatically. That mm. that's the big change. That's just not just electronic music. That's that's all music. I think. I think it's much harder for new bands to get through now. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's. Uh... You have a lot of choices. There's, there's a, you know, SoundCloud alone can open you up to thousands of bands. I mean, how are you supposed to, as a consumer, find something? It's a great thing, um, but it's, well, it, it, which it, it, there's got to be a change in the way that music's delivered. That that's, and I'm not sure we found it. I'm not sure we found it yet because the new generation, um, are, you know, love music. Mm-hmm but they don't see it as having an intrinsic value. Interesting. They see it as being, it's not, it's not a commodity. It's just something that's there, you know, and, and for example, albums aren't, aren't a thing anymore like they used to be. Yes. You know, I remember when I was, I was buying my albums when I was younger, I was literally, um, I would, you know, if it was a new human league album or, mm-hmm. or whoever it might be, Thompson twins or whatever, um, show my age again there. Um, I, would go home with it, having spent a pocket money on oh, this yeah. final, and I, I would make myself like it. Right, totally. It was an investment. Yeah, exactly. And, and you would you would listen to it. I mean, the Hysteria album by the Human League. I, I, I still, I'm still not a fan of that now. That's that's like thirty years ago. But but I bought it and I kept right. listening to it. Um, and kids don't need to do that now, you know. And 
it, it's because because of that, because you can just listen to one song, uh-huh. our albums as a format don't really have the same value as they used to have. I think with the resurgence of vinyl, mm-hmm. that's that's changed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that that's kind of um, almost like artifact, um, sort of tangible product is, is, is a change. and is only for good. But I just think that the way that music's delivered has, has, has got to change somehow. Interesting. I, I really, I love it. Like most of my stuff is digital. I haven't bought a CD in a long time. I'll get vinyl, like you said, every now and then. We did, I did a, I did a, a side project with Angel Spit called uh, Hardcore Pong. And uh, you, do, you do a lot of side projects. I do, I do, I do a lot. And this one I thought was going to be the one, right? Like this is like I was so happy with the material, and we decided to not put it out in any physical context. Context, and it, like it did okay, but like I just there was this idea that it wasn't like real. I don't know. And then I did yet another side project called Ghastly Invertebrate, and I put that one to CD, and that does okay, but. I don't know. It's that that, that CD is not flying off the shelves yet. Now that's I haven't uh, really um, toured on it or anything like that. But I I like this I- idea of like a third way. I don't know if I've found personally the uh, the best way to deliver it. But uh, well, that's that's the that's the sort of magic key that we need to find hmm. um, for 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 new bands really, because there's a lot of great bands out there. I think um, there's a band called Empathy Test. I don't know if you've heard them. Totally. Yeah. That's- um, and they seem to have cracked it somehow. Um, it, it's difficult to see. I mean, obviously, they've got some great songs, and, and it's quite a unique sound. Um, also, they're not they're not quite so um, endemically seen in the way that they look or the way that they perform, uh-huh. which 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 might be the difference. But um, but other than that, there's not a lot of bands who who, who who can break it. And I think it's got to be because now people can make music in the bedroom, as you know. And I think most it's, of them, that's how I do it, man. Yeah, exactly, and and you know the days of big recording studios are long long gone, um, and you know you can mix and master on a laptop um, or a MacBook, um, <laughs> and and do you remember that plastic MacBook you had? You were doing your stuff on. In uh, I still have it. It's it's held together with hope and Scotch tape, but <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> I remember that. I remember at the time thinking, how, how old is that? Um, but but yeah, so you know, people can make music and deliver it themselves. Yeah. And so, so the music industry as a model has become this kind of free service almost, and mm. it's and and the money comes from merchandise and money comes from from concerts, um, and for so, for a sort of peripheral scene like industrial or or gothic, that's hard. Mm. That's hard. So so yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But that that's the biggest change for me. That was a very long long answer, wasn't it? No, it's um, great. It's perfect. Um, but that that's the big change for me over the years is that it's almost impossible for 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 artists to to break in the same way as they used to do mm. is it that important like i mean this whole idea of of breaking like i don't know if it's even possible like uh i don't mean i suppose it is but uh man maybe it's just off my personal radar but that seemed to be like such this weird goal, like we're going to get signed to whatever label and then we're going to get on the soundtrack to Underworld fucking 8 or whatever is coming out. Um, and now I feel it's like if we can break even on uh, these band camp sales, then then we're, we're in the clear. We've, 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 we've leveled up. Yeah, but that's right. That's right. And I think that the, the parameters have changed, haven't they? The, yeah. um, you know, there was a glass ceiling there, but people have just sort of um, ignored it now. And it's, bec- it's become this, you know, you, you make the music that you enjoy making. and th- But I think it's a, it's, it's a shame that that, that sort of uh, almost American dream of, <laughs> of, of getting signed and driving a Ferrari and, and, you know, appearing on what we would call Top of the Pops or yeah. Sat- Saturday Night Live. Um, yeah. Um, that, that, that doesn't exist anymore. That, that path doesn't exist anymore, really. Um, except for the most the most mainstream of pop artists, um, but you know, I, I think I think electronic music is is enjoying a bit of a resurgence. There's some good. I don't know if you know the band Actors. Oh hell yeah! I think I think they're amazing. Um, really like what they do, um, and I think you know it, it, it goes in cycles, doesn't it? I think that the, the industrial yeah. and gothic scene 
struggled a bit for the for the sort of last probably last three or four years. Mm. Um, sort of plateaued slightly. Um, that was part of the reason why I kind of abdicated responsibility mm. and fucked off. Um, but I can see sort of like sort of fresh shoots, if you like, of of new talent and and the things that are quite inspiring. Perfect. Well, that was that was weird. I stopped. That. No, yeah, it's, it does. It's, it's, it is inspiring though. Like that was a great way to 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 end the thought. I want to put a pin in that for just a second, and say what is up. Uh, 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 salute, hello to uh, uh, Batirzta from Mexico, and uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your handle, sir, but uh, thank you, and. Uh, uh, giving the fans something tangible never hurts. Brian says, Jack, you are not wrong, sir. We did a, we did a show in Fredericton, Canada, and the guy asked if I had any tapes. And I said, I have no tapes. But uh, that's coming back, I guess, too. Um, Jay, uh, we are on... Well, part of the great thing about the sort of the bedroom revolution is I get to have a TV show uh, from here in space and run a record label and all that shit just because I want to. But we are on a rogue flight path. Uh, I'm going to bring this couch back into the space station and we will sign off shortly. Uh, do you have any Jerry Springer style clothing? Clo clothing. Clo do you, do you I, have I I do have some Jerry, Jerry Springer st uh, style clothing, yeah, but, uh, but I don't worry. Uh, do you have either clothing or closing uh, thoughts? Uh, we will look for the new album sometime in 2020. Uh, do you want to sign off uh, here on Space Couch with any anything? Well, well, firstly, I just want to say that you're you're an amazing guy, and I think you often Aww. underestimate yourself. No. Um, you, you, you do. You know, in my experience, you massively underestimate your talent and your your personality and you shouldn't but um, so i'm saying this on air for some oh. weird reason it's all getting a bit awkward no, now no, it's um, not. but thank you <laughs> um, man. secondly um one thing i've learned in the last sort of uh, last year probably last 18 months yeah. is that um you you have to live life to the max and you have to live for now because you know not everyone's got a tomorrow so you know just make the most of, of what you have and and um, and be kind and love those around you because life's too short. Perfect. Uh, we will hit outro. Uh, traditionally, uh, we can we can yak over the uh, the outro here. Man, I love the uh, that was a great great closing thought. And we might need pictures of your giant dog for the um, the industrial superstar pet calendar. We keep threatening to to do like. Uh, <laughs> We get we'll get Amon's pets in there, and uh, I think I think uh, Angel Spitz' cat is slated for that. But um, he's, a, he's a he's a massive husky. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. We will we'll put him on the cover. All right, sign. Wait, I lost the mouse. Signing out.